KPSC, KSCS in Fresno. As Rude Awakening begins now. And you are listening to Pacifica Radio, KPFA 94.1 FM. I'm Sabrina Jacobs, and this is A Root Awakening. On today's show, I'll be taking a brief peek into the foster care system and how children are being drugged in order to control their behavior. I'll speak to Fred Shaw, a community activist trying to right the wrongs of the foster care system, and internist nephrologist Dr. Alan Sawson, who will give us some details on the effects of psychotropic medications. Stay tuned. Today, we're going to be talking to Mr. Fred Shaw, and Mr. Shaw is um, the president and the co-founder of the World Literacy Crusade. He also co-founded the Basic Life Institute, um, and that's an organization co- contracted with the state of California and the county of Los Angeles, serving at-risk youth from ages 12 to 18. He is also the past president of the Compton branch of the NAACP, and he's also the two, 2005 uh, State of the African American Male and Congressional Black Caucus Foundation uh, winner of the Men Who Care, along with Jane. Fox, and he's going to talk to us about uh, the drugging of foster children. And Mr. Shaw, thank you so much for being on A Rude Awakening. Well, thank you for having me on the show, Sabrina. Mm-hmm. Now, let's just um, let's uh, let's get a, a, an overview. Uh, tell us about your experience or why you took on this particular issue um, to try and make a difference, the drugging of foster children. Um, talk to us. Well, first of all, you know, it has been said in the late Whitney Houston song, song she said, I believe the children are our future. And the children are our future. And unfortunately, that future is being snatched from the minds of, uh, of our young people. You know, if you're drugged up, you can't even stumble through the door of success. So I believe that this, um, what you could be labeled as attack on young people needs to be addressed in the community and people need to be made aware of what is going on. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, how is this happening? I mean, there's this whole, uh, it seems like there's a psychiatric industrial complex along with the prison industrial complex, along with the military industrial complex. Big Pharma is making billions of dollars off of uh, every prescription that's, you know, written um, here in the state of California and throughout the country. Um, how is this happening? Uh, what is it? Can you give us a step-by-step of how these kids are going from being foster children to being labeled as troubled? foster children to being labeled as uh, troubled foster children that need to be drugged? Well, number one, most of the kids in foster care, along with children family services or children protective services, uh, along with the children in probation, you are, whenever you are removed from your home, it is a traumatic event. Mm-hmm. Um, be it for because you were molested, because you were abused, because of whatever it was, so when you remove a child from the home, it causes trauma. Then the the mental health people come in and interview that child while they're in the middle of middle of their trauma, and then give them a label and drug them. Mm-hmm. And so that's basically what is going on. If they took me and you out of our home right now, mm-hmm. uh, without us knowing what was going on, away from our loved one, or if you have children or whatever, it would cause a depression. Mm-hmm. That's a normal reaction. So if someone came and asked you how you felt and you started crying and then they said you suffered through a whole bunch of different mental disorders and then prescribed you a drug, I mean, what are you to do? Especially when that system enforces that drug because kids who don't take it can be punished or privileges taken away or a lot of things. So kids will respond, and so we're drug drugging all of these kids at an alarming rate. Okay, so basically they're having all of these adverse reactions to being taken out of the home. They're uh, they're crying when they're asked about uh, uh, why they've been taken out of their home. They're they're uh, faced with the uh, you know ditching school, not going to school, or just being not responsive in school. Um, what are some of the things that 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 um, 
that they're trying to say that these children are actually suffering through. I mean, there's obvious, it's obvious that there's depression, right? So they're giving them antidepressants. Um, the, the child, of course, is going to act out. So they're giving them antipsychotics and whatnot. Um, now, where does that take the child after they've been labeled, after they've been put onto these, these different drugs? Where does it go from there? Well, basically, after these kids have been drugged, there's several paths to take. Number one, mm -hmm. it takes a lot of them down a the path of drugs, uh, uh, you know, the that, like the cocaine and, mm -hmm. and, and your heroin and so forth. It takes a lot of them toward prison because you have a kid now who's being drugged that with mind-altering mm -hmm. or psychotropic drugs. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know why they pretend that they have some type of scientific evidence that these drugs are effective on the mind. You know, it's like it's not like you're dealing with the body. So mm -hmm. since they cannot predict what type of outcome these drugs will have on these young people, they should not be giving them to them because many times the kid acts out the actual thing that they're supposed to have. Mm -hmm. If you look at the side effects of some of these drugs, mm -hmm. drugs that, that are treating depression also have the side effects mm -hmm. of causing depression. Well, how does that work? You know, you give a person a drug to, you know, to prevent suicide, but one of the side effects of the drug is suicidal tendencies. Mm -hmm. How does that work? <laughs> you know, and, and, and but the one thing they have not given these young people, and you hit it on the nail on the head, they give them antipsychotic drugs, mm -hmm. they give them all of these different things, but they have not given them mm -hmm. the most important thing they need mm -hmm. is effective therapy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see, exactly. because. They can take and see you, me, and a couple other people in that same hour that they have to put that kid in a, in, in a chair. Mm -hmm. And they can make a lot more money that way. So you come in, you call in Fred Shaw, you see him for 15 minutes, you prescribe him a drug, and I'm gone. Mm -hmm. Bill for Fred Shaw that hour. And then they see Sabrina, mm -hmm. and they drug her, and she's gone. Mm -hmm. But if he has to give me therapy, mm -hmm. I'll take a whole hour or more. And that's 60%. 60% of uh, these children are giving these psychiatric drugs. Now, these drugs, they're powerful. We're talking Seroquel. We're talking uh, Klonopin. We're talking all kinds of really, really strong, like you said, psychotropic drugs that alter the chemicals in the brain permanently. And these are drugs that are supposed to be prescribed for adults. There's some type of loophole in the, the laws right now where they're able to give them to children. Is there any, uh, what, what is that, uh, what is, what's being done to looking for Forward to try to close that loophole in legislation where it's okay to give these children drugs uh, that are supposed to be prescribed for, for adults? Well, the Citizens Commission on Human Rights, uh, CCHR, mm -hmm. uh, INT, uh, mm -hmm. they go by the CCHRINT.org. If anybody wants to um, follow up and get more information, they have been leading the fight on this thing. Uh, it is a, a fight against, where David is going against Goliath. That's because right. the pharmaceuticals have the money, they have the backing of the authority of, of the FDA, and they have the backing of, of uh, medical, psychiatric associations. The medical associations have bought into it. But I'm going to tell you something. Mm -hmm. I debated a psychiatrist on radio, mm -hmm. and I asked one question, and it killed the whole conversation. <laughs> what could be wrong with a child that we would give them a drug that could cause sudden death? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. What could be wrong with a child that we would give them a drug that would cause brain shrinkage? Mm -hmm. See, and that's the questions that need to be asked. And everyone, they look at overlooking it, and they're lobbying the pharmaceuticals. They got big money. They can lobby the, lobby the politicians. They uh, buy ads to the activist groups. They support these groups so they can't stand up against them. That's right. See, so they get to put out, you look at the TV and you say, and if you're not feeling well, you should ask your doctor. And then they give this long list of side effects. Right. Uh, you know, right. and then at the end of the last side effect, they say, so ask your doctor is this. And then you see the smiley face people and everything. <laughs> One of the things I would do is I wouldn't even allow that to be done. Exactly. Why are you telling your doctor what you need instead of your doctor telling you what you need? Right. Right, right. Why? Oh, so it's legalized mm -hmm. drug dealing. It's just legalized. Did you know? I just want to throw this in because I know. Yeah. Did you know that cocaine and Ritalin is almost the same exact drug? 
I believe it. Well, cocaine used to be uh, used to be, they used to uh, manufacture Coca Cola with it. So <laughs> right. Well, but Ritalin yeah. is a synthetic version version that goes to the same receptors in the brain as cocaine. As cocaine. Yeah. It does the same thing, and the kids have recognized it because they're snorting it and they're selling it to mm -hmm. each other. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it, it is. It's really scary. Right. It's really really scary. Now now, what are you doing as an activists what do you what what are you how what is your position in this particular part of the movement for justice uh for children well i'm looking out and i and i'm actually i'm looking out for all children but i'm looking out in particularly for the african-american community that i feel is being attacked by mental health mm -hmm. um you know we're more likely to be put on drugs per person than any anybody else we're more likely to be put on those drugs because of lack of education and poor nutrition which can handle a large part of the so-called adhd mm -hmm. and other symptoms that people have mm -hmm. if you're not eating right you're going suffering from malnutrition you're not educated properly you don't know sentence structure you can't do these types of things then you start running in the roadblocks that cause frustration and you know so i'm trying to put the word out now i was part of a group that uh, worked with CCHR and went down and passed legislation some years ago. I wish I could give you the year. But uh, where we had George Bush actually sign legislation saying that schools could not force parents to put their kids on psychiatric drugs as a uh, condition for being in school. Mm -hmm. So there, there are rules, laws, and things that are being done. What we have to do is through shows like yourself and other people and people want to get involved, we have to get them to start spreading the word of what's going on. Right. Um, it, right. You know, and I've had personal experience with my family mm -hmm. where psychiatrists have sat there and told my sister that her 19 year old daughter no longer belonged to her. It belonged, he, it belonged to him. Mm -hmm. And he could drug her if he wanted to. God, this is sick. This is just, you know, and, and you know, and just in closing, Mr. Fred Shaw, um, activist, uh, community activist, and uh, oof, long, long, long list, long resume here, just speaking with me on a rude awakening about uh, the drugging of foster children. Um, what is scary is that big pharma, you know, just with this example that you gave, it shows it's indicative how um, agents of big pharma can just pull these children and use them as guinea pigs for for. Or whatever they want to do. Oh, I can drug your child if I want to because it's not your child anymore. I mean, that's devastating. Uh, and, that's devastating. And if and if I can add one thing, absolutely, we should real quickly because I know the time is limited. It's okay. Every child diagnosed with a psychiatric disorder should have two medical evaluations. They should have a first evaluation, and then they should have a second one if it's still determined that they need a drug. I know a young baby. Well, I knew of a young baby, a lady who had heard one of my lectures said that she checked on this child who was on uh, Ritalin and another drug, mm -hmm. and the child was three years old. And she was screaming, scratching her head, pulling her face at her ear, scratching her face, yelling, and they had her on these drugs. She mm -hmm. took the child to a doctor and found that she had a severe head, uh, she had head lice and a severe ear infection. Mm -hmm. That is what she had. So... I'm telling people to get medical evaluations, get a second opinion. Do not put your kids on these drugs, at least, especially if you're just starting them. And they have to be very careful when the kids come off of the drugs because, because sometimes that causes a psychotic break in itself. So all of these school shootings and things like that, they do the research and they find that most of these kids are on these psychiatric drugs. Mm -hmm. And if you will, if you can commit suicides behind this, behind the drugs, you can commit homicide behind the drugs. So we don't even know what we're looking at a lot of the times. We see a Robin Williams, we see people committing suicide and doing these things. Mm -hmm. If the drugs work, <laughs> then, then why are these people killing themselves? And if they don't work, then why are we giving them to them? Mr. Fred Shaw, plainly put, 
and in your face. That is the rude awakening. That is the rude awakening <laughs> question of the week. Okay, why, why, and why? Mr. Fred Shaw, he's the president and co-founder of the World Literacy Crusade and co-founded the Basic Life Institute uh, with the state of California and county of Los Angeles, serving at-risk youth down in Los Angeles and also the uh, Men Who Care. He got the uh, Congressional Black Caucus Foundation's award for Men Who Care, um, all behind helping out the babies, helping out the kids. Mr. Fred Shaw, thank you so much for being on A Rude Awakening. It was a pleasure. Thank you. And now we'll hear from Dr. Alan Salson on why our society consistently chooses the pharmaceutical industrial complex. So now, as far as with uh, foster children uh, in particular, why is it, do you think, that our society leans more to big pharma and leans more towards pharmaceutical drugs um, as being an answer to uh, to the to a lot of the issues that our, our children are facing and in particular foster children because they're going through so much trauma right well you know the marketing and the propaganda is just enormous you see on television every day uh, this drug that drug and they'll run through the litany of all the bad things the drug can do to you but the person <laughs> right. on the commercial is smiling and happy <laughs> so you, maybe you don't hear what they're really saying that this drug can cause sudden death right drug can cause heart disease this drug blah 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 uh, and you know people get put on these drugs and the, the doctors themselves we are propagandized as well and we are trained to use drugs. I mean, when I went to medical school, which is a long time ago, that was about all we had to offer. We didn't get into lifestyle changes. It really wasn't the area of the doctor's treatment to teach somebody how to change their lifestyle. We didn't get involved in that. I didn't learn that until much, much later, mm -hmm. largely starting with the institutes. And, you know, now that's like the primary focus because you can change so many things by changing the way, a, say, a child eats uh, or the television he watches or who he's around mm -hmm. uh, and who has a bad, you know, creates a bad example. All of those things are really important. And, you know, why would you give somebody some kind of sedating psychiatric drug when the real problem is that he's getting... Uh, yelled at by a crazy neighbor mm -hmm. you know like, mm -hmm. things like that happen mm -hmm. well you know let's uh let, can you take a step by step into um how uh, especially in the situation of a foster child how they end up on these drugs i mean they they end up uh, let's start with um say the, the child protective services comes in and takes them away for whatever reason um and then they they get put into the system. Um, how does that start? I mean, how do how would a doctor go in and just say just give some random child? Oh, you know, you're acting out because you know you're in foster care. It's usually because they're in foster care again, or you know, for the first time, and you're acting out. So we're going to give you. How do they justify giving these psychotropic drugs and these mind altering drugs to to children to babies that? They haven't even tested on children in the first place, and, and, and a lot of these drugs aren't even, they're not even supposed to be giving them to children. How does that happen? Yeah, well, you're, you're right there. The testing is not done. It's just uh, the child is seen to be not behaving in the way that's desired, and again, because we are so oriented toward the use of drugs, and a lot of times that's all the doctor has to offer. He doesn't have anything else to offer, so they'll, they'll give a drug. Which drug do they give? Basically, whatever comes to mind, because there is no test mm -hmm. that tells you this is the drug this child should be on. This is a, an imbalance, and this is what's usually used is the child has an imbalance of neurotransmitters. Mm -hmm. So uh, what are they? Well, the serotonin level is off, or the norepinephrine level is off, or the dopamine level is off. Never measured. And actually, there is no good way of measuring those things, uh, but it's just, you know, a statement that's made. And because the doctor's in authority, uh, his word is accepted, and this is the way it goes. Mm -hmm. And the parent says, well, tell me, uh, or the foster parent, what are the problems with this drug? He says, oh, you know, it's, it'll be okay. Uh, we don't run into problems. Mm -hmm. And then a week later or two weeks later, something goes happens to the child that is very much an adverse effect of that drug. 
and there's no predictability. You know, the doctor doesn't know. Nobody knows what that drug is going to do to that child because there's no measurement of anything to determine what's going to happen. There's no way to know whether he gets better, whether he gets worse. Totally unpredictable. Mm-hmm. So they just, they, they're not even, there's no measurement, there's no, so there's no measurement, there's no regulation to, to the labeling of these children, and there's no attempt to try to find an alternative. Is that what we're saying here? Is that yeah, what that's, that's basically what we're saying. I mean, you know that if the child has one visit and he walks away with a drug, that, that was, that's the effort that was made to treat him, just the drug. Okay. okay. You know, doctors oftentimes are very busy you know they have a certain number of minutes and they don't think they can start getting into you know what's happened to him in his life what accidents was he involved in was he beaten you know what happened with this child and what's his diet like what's he given to eat does he eat sugar all day long Mm -hmm. does he watch tv does he see violent things Mm -hmm. uh, on the video games you know what goes on with this child does he get exercise does he play sports Mm -hmm. uh what happens what goes on you know, these kinds of things are are not looked at. If there's any testing done, there may be some very simple blood studies done for blood count or, you know, basic blood sugar and that kind of stuff, which doesn't, you know, usually it's all normal. And you're, you still have the child who is behaving in a way that's not quite optimal. And, you know, what's the answer here? The answer is a drug. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I want to definitely... Uh, um direct our, our listeners to uh, the mercurynews.com mercurynews.com on the uh, the, the this uh, an ex extremely uh, detailed expose on it's called drugging our kids and it's a bay area news group investigation um by karen desa and um it states here 15 percent of the states and that's california state of california foster children um of all ages are prescribed medications known as psychotropics um they list here weight gain um as one being one of the biggest issues um morbid obesity in children um what are some of the other um what are some of the other effects dr sasson well the things that can occur in the worst case is the drug does the opposite of what it's supposed to do so if the child is depressed or anxious he or she gets more depressed and more anxious Mm -hmm. so there's an increasing problem which can lead to accidents and injuries and acting out in ways that are very dangerous i know of a number of children again worst case scenario who uh, killed themselves and i'm talking about seven eight nine and ten year old kids and it's known with these drugs and it's it's listed in the physician's desk reference for every psychiatric drug that exists that these drugs given to children adolescents or young adults may result in suicidal ideation or suicidal attempts mm-hmm. and that was fought by the pharmaceutical companies for years but mm-hmm. the fda looked at the evidence and said yeah this is really true this is a real risk mm-hmm. and there are many cases really unfortunate cases of children you know, killing themselves, damaging themselves, taking overdoses, uh, hanging themselves in their parents' bathroom. This kind of mm. awful story uh, that happens because the effect of the drug is unknown. The mm. doctor doesn't know what it's going to do to that child. And, if you know, if there's an adverse effect, then the parent brings him back and says, well, he's worse. So the doctor stops the drug, gives him another drug, or sometimes we'll add a second drug to the first drug. So there are some kids that are put on three drugs at the same time because the effect of one wasn't what was wanted and the effect of two wasn't what was wanted and the effect of three may also be not what's wanted. Other things that happen that really commonly are, are that the uh, the kid is just uh, suppressed, you know, the emotions are knocked down. That's what these drugs mostly do anyway is reduce emotions so the anger is suppressed and the kid is less active and less agitated so he seems quieter but there's also less positive emotion there's less happiness there's less outgoingness there's less communication so the kid sort of is you know turned into someone who's living in a closet you know he's just not interactive with other people and i've had numerous uh, parents tell me that uh, you know they don't like their kid on this drug which was given to him in school because he had a diagnosis of ADHD, couldn't do his homework or something like that. Mm-hmm. They get a drug. The kid has become emotionally flattened and doesn't isn't responsive and that's not acceptable to the parents and they stop the drug. Mm. 
goodness. Well, the, and that's you speaking of, of children with parents that actually are, are trying to interact and trying to find some type of solution to uh, whatever problem behavioral otherwise that the child is having. Now, um, in your opinion, in your expert 40 plus year opinion, <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Sawson, do you think that, um, do you think that since there is this loophole to give children, foster children that are being shuffled from parent to parent, home to home, um, do you think that they are fodder for Big Pharma to test on them, to be used as guinea pigs? Do you think that that is a possibility or that has, is what has been going on? Because this, it doesn't cost Big Pharma anything. This is, this comes out of the taxpayers' money. This, somehow this comes out of the California taxpayers' money. We're paying for these pills through Medi-Cal. Um, for these pills or for these kids to be doped up on these pills. So do you think that that is, that, that there is a, that possibility? There is that, um, Oh yeah, I, I think it's a, it's a bonanza for the pharmaceutical companies. I mean, I've, I've read about them and heard about them and I know that the ideal for a company is to have everybody on their drug. <laughs> You know, how do you, how are you the most successful? Is everybody's on our drug? You know, 300 million people are on our drug. Well, they're not going to get 300 million, but, you know, they can get a fair number of foster kids and a fair number of other kids and all kinds of other folks on, on the medication. And the ideal is not for a month and not for two months, but they should stay on this drug forever. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you know, they're not making the money. And, you know, I've seen that with substance abuse where a person gets put on something like methadone, you know, which is a narcotic that's legally acceptable, and they try to keep them on methadone forever. Right. So, you know, yeah. it's that kind of, of behavior where, where uh, the drug is the ideal and the use of the drug permanently is the best ideal, and that's that's the purpose of it. So a lot of these medications, a child can get started on them when he's five or six or seven years old and it doesn't stop you know they're, they're taking it when they're 15 and 16 and 20 and then they have adult attention deficit disorder and they're still on it but i've seen these drugs also act as uh, opening the way for substance abuse because a number of them are actually addicting you know the ritalin drugs and the adderall drugs that are used for adhd are amphetamine type drugs they are addicting mm -hmm. and a lot of these kids Certainly not all of them, but a good number of them uh, get involved with other drugs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, just a gateway type of a thing where, yeah, well, drugs are okay. I've, my doctor put me on drugs. My parents want me on drugs. So mm -hmm. here I am. Here's these other drugs. Mm -hmm. So why don't I take them? It's the same thing. Right, 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 right. It's just this uh, vicious cycle that's being started. Um, and, oh, God, it's just so sad. It's just... Uh, we got to talk some more. There's going to be a part two and a part three to this conversation, Dr. Sosa, because we have run out of time, unfortunately. And we're talking with uh, Dr. Alan Sosin, uh, internist and nephrologist down in Irvine, Irvine, California. Appreciate you being with me, yours truly, on a rude awakening. This has been a rude awakening of a conversation. I tell you, it's just been very, very intense. And I look forward to speaking with you in the very near future in regards to the drugging of foster care children here in California. Appreciate your time, doctor. Thank you very much, Sabrina. I appreciate it, too. All right, all right, and that was a taste of what is happening to drugged, neglected foster children. It can be agreed that the steady flow of money to Big Pharma needs to be halted in order for a complete overhaul of the foster care system to happen. Stay tuned to A Rude Awakening for more, and you can also go to the Citizens Commission for Human Rights website at CCHR, CCHR. Dot org And check out the amazing detailed article by Bay Area News Group investigative reporter Karen DeSaw entitled Drugging Our Kids. A big thanks to my guests, Mr. Fred Shaw and Dr. Alan Sawson. A huge thank you to Vicki Walker of Citizens Commission of Human Rights for facilitating. And thanks to Wesley Burton on controls. I'll be back next week. Hard Knock Radio is next. Have a great week, everybody. This is Brian Edwards Teekert. How did a civil uprising in Syria end with the U.S. sending bombers back to Iraq? 
Since before the first shots were fired in Syria's civil war, veteran journalist Reese Ehrlich has been reporting from on the ground, talking to protesters and rebels, refugees and soldiers, even President Bashar al-Assad. On Thursday, October 9th, he's presenting his new book, Inside Syria, the backstory of their civil war and what the world can expect. The event starts at 7.30 p.m. at St. John's Presbyterian Church. That's 2727 College Avenue in Berkeley. Tickets are at brownpapertickets.com and local independent bookstores. Proceeds benefit KPFA. And details are on our website, 